Welcome to Fantastic Tones for Human Bones. This is a podcast where Mark Clifford and myself, Robert Woodsledew, talk about music that we find inspiring, featuring exciting guests. In this episode, we talk to our friend Richard Hegg. Richard is an electronic musician, composer, and DJ based in the San Francisco Bay Area. We go through Richard's long history of songwriting through the lens of the club dance music scene, starting from his earlier work as Panic Bomber, up through his current artist name, Richard Hegg, and his record label, Art Heist. Visit richardhegg.com for all the relevant links to Richard's musical catalog, news about what he's up to, and links to his social media. You can support the podcast by subscribing to us on Patreon. Follow us on Twitter at tones underscore four... Follow us on Instagram at FT4HB. We greatly appreciate any and all support. Thank you. Fantastic tones for human bones. Welcome, uh, Richard Hegg. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. I feel like you're having us because we're in your studio. Yeah, wait, okay, so first, first of all, is this is this? Are you guys already doing this? Like, uh, has this thing already happened? We haven't well, launched this. It oh, okay, this is called Fantastic Tones for Human Bones, and we are your hosts, Mark Clifford and Robert Woodsledew. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we we haven't we haven't launched it. We've we've done um we've done one with Jordan Glenn. And, oh yeah, uh, Jordan Glenn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we are. We have five more scheduled. We have five more scheduled, and we'll be rolling them out once. Uh, That's exciting. <clears throat> yes. That's exciting. Well, th- I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely um, honored to be uh, to be to be included in uh, amongst your first. Yeah. Well, it's thank a, you very much. The, the yeah. honor is all on this side of the table. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let's get the backstory straight here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so. Born in Scotland, right? Mm-hmm. But not for long, right? Not for long. Uh, so, right. So I I, uh, I moved to Southern California when I was five. So hence, I lost my accent. There's a little bit of, uh, you know, every now and again, there's a little bit of vernacular that comes out. But I uh, mm-hmm. grew up in SoCal. Then uh, went to Miami to go to school, to go to uh, uh, University of Miami. Well, honestly, I had a great time. Not with the school, but just with like, uh, I'm, well, you know, whatever. School, school. Had a great fucking time. <laughs> uh, all right, I should watch my language, right? No, um, no, 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 no. Do okay. you think? Say whatever. All right, you want. I, I try I, to be. First. I, I, say whatever you want. Real quick question. Um, you, does it matter what age you are when you leave a place? If 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 you are classified as an expatriate, does that oh. matter? Because you say that you are one in your bio, but the, I mean, you didn't leave on your own volition, right? It, well, you, you, exactly. The main the main thing is that I don't have a Scottish accent, and uh, that's one of those defining characteristics, you know, that's very hard to miss. Yeah. But I have a you know a Californian accent. You could probably rustle one up though. Huh? I can rustle it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah. So so Miami. Then, uh, you know, I was there for, like, 13 years, uh, which is kind of interesting. Um, that's where I learned how so, to... De- so, wait, yeah. hold up, hold up, hold up. When, when did you first, like, get into music? That's the question. Uh, I'm not very good at knowing the the kind of childhood questions for some reason. It's just, you know, we all have the different <laughs> yeah. things. Like, I I I took piano lessons. My Like, my, my, my parents forced me to take piano lessons yeah. and I hated it and it was only when I got until and, and into high school and I started playing piano in a high school jazz band that I was like wait a second <laughs> this is kind of rad yes and that was really my uh, gateway you know uh, I was a freshman and the senior guitar player gave me a fish tape ah. and I was like <laughs> oh man yeah totally wait did you were you a fan of fish I I point. I knew I knew very little about no I, I knew I knew nothing about it but I was like man this really grooves I was getting really into like the local punk scene and stuff and just kind of you know underground music I was discovering um, you know just rough and tumble underground music and and where was high school where was local okay yeah this is I, <clears throat> so I grew up in a very small town um, a mile from Michael Jackson's Neverland Valley Ranch ah. uh, called uh, Los Olivos. It's over the mountains from Santa Barbara. So uh, I just grew up in a small rural town. Okay. Um, yeah, and that was uh, yeah, and that's kind of. So I wasn't really exposed to a whole lot, but I would. Um, but I had. I have amazing parents. They would like drive me 
and my my friends and I they were like our parents would take turns like driving us to punk all ages club in Santa Barbara on oh. on like weekends and that's mm. kind of like how we discovered things you know um, that's cool yeah it was great it was but, really good so you were into punk back then that that was my that that was how I got into discovering my own route mm. okay was it was through punk it was through um you know punk and hardcore and ska that was oh, yeah. that was just what was going on and that's how i discovered oh there's music that's not classical music because i was doing you know the the suzuki method through my my um my uh, music my dad always had good <laughs> records around the house but yeah. that was really how i discovered oh wait there's cool stuff out there outside of you know uh, you know, obviously, I had you know Nirvana records and stuff like that. Yeah. But, but. So I, okay, because I I grew up similarly. I I would come to California for the summers to be with my dad, and then ska took over everything for me because uh, like my older stepbrother at the time showed me like oh you know like I didn't know this about bowling. you either. You know, like yeah, let's go bowling. I think yeah. they're Fresno. Yeah, that one. Yeah, I think so. And I think you're right. They were sick, man. They like, were great. I remember seeing them. Yeah, and. Um, but I, I have one specific question going back to what you were saying about the going into the jazz band and seeing the charts. Yeah. And um, I like the charts that are given to high school level jazz bands because the voicings are actually pretty hip. Like things that you can take on. Do you do you feel like that influenced anything about how you uh, voice your chords or anything like that now? Or or. Was that was there anything that you took from that, or was it more you were more interested in just like going to see hardcore punk ska? That's and really interesting. Yeah, th that just was just like okay, maybe piano isn't as lame as I thought it was, and I can maybe apply it towards these interests that I'm discovering now. Uh, you know? That's a good question. I was I was never an iconoclast in terms of um, you know rejecting education. Um, I don't think I I. Uh, while I, okay, uh, that's a good question. All right, <laughs> I don't think of myself as a good musician in terms in terms of my music theory <clears throat> and in terms of things like voicings. Okay. I, I we're 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 not here to hold that against you. No, uh, it's, 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. But uh, I don't think of myself as like as uh, like I've I've never um, uh, studied counterpoint, uh. right? things like that. I've just I've just kind of felt it out and that was one of those things that um that 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 I think I, I took from the jazz band stuff and all okay. that was Wait. was it was from more more connecting that with the getting that inherently under my fingers. Well, down the line so, the counter just just sorry, real quick the yeah. counterpoint thing. I I have a very specific point in time when I'm um, listening to some of these examples that we're going to get into, I was just like, oh, he probably started counterpoint. But anyway, <laughs> that's, funny. that's funny. That's funny. But anyway, sorry about that. I've never been in a high school jazz band. <clears throat> Is this it's, it's is this awesome. stuff? It's uh, is it all written? <laughs> it's so fun. It's so <laughs> Should fun. I be in a high school? Band? Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome, oh man, it's so, um, great. Wait, it's so great. No, but is is the um? I should clarify. I played drums, but that's not what we're talking about. Um. Is the is the stuff all written out, or is it like you have to write chord? Like they just do the chord symbols. Or? They do chord symbols and voicings. So usually okay. it's um, four note voicings. Uh, you know, like three, seven, nine, thirteen. That's, usually, is that kind of what you? That would. That's what I would get. Yeah, that's what I would get. Uh, as so, so I only saw the uh, piano charts. So I was just focused on trying to keep up with the older kids. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. So so. Uh, yeah, it was it was it was exactly that. It was so it was spelt out chords, however you say that, and and then uh, there would be specific voicings, and then I would get the uh, lead line as mm -hmm. the as the uh, pianist. So, you know, theoretically, you're meant to be able to play around with that and all that. But you know, I was just trying to keep up, at least at the time. You know? Right on. Yeah. Um, but maybe using your ear instead of like using technical knowledge to get around to that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, like okay, so 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 I, th you know, I don't think I have a great ear personally. I, it's it's something that that I've always tried. playing playing with you. I'm always like, damn, I'm. 
<laughs> I mean, a lot of people can relate to that. When he yeah. said playing with you, he pointed at Bob. So <laughs> yeah, 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 a lot of people can relate to that experience. Where you're like, oh, oh man, woof! I need a minute here. Hang yeah, on. yeah, totally, totally, totally. Uh, uh, where's the one? <laughs> um, yeah, no. Uh, anyway, I don't know where we're going with this. Well, okay, that's so. Did you play in like a punk band at the time or anything? Yeah, I had a, like, I had a little crappy band. I God, what were we called? <laughs> oh God, I'm so embarrassed. Okay, so <laughs> my history my history of names is is just really not yeah, subtle. Okay. So you had a band. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had a band. Yeah, I had a band. But that's um, cool. And then like like were you listening to um, basically? I got that you were listening to punk and basically the standard fare for. Americans. Yeah, yeah. In in California, there's yeah. there's like a scene. For sure. Yeah, I think what I mean. I mean, honestly, I I feel very fortunate to 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 have grown up kind of as I did. Where you know, my dad was always playing. You know, you know, Beatles and um, you know, Manfred Mann and uh, you know, uh, just like you know, British prog rock around the house. Mm-hmm. And so, so, so mm-hmm. I grew up with like kind of seventies British prog rock. It's kind of, it's kind of like Giant, kind of stuff. Gentle Giant, yeah. exactly. Yeah, Camel bands yes. like that. Yeah. Yes. Well, <laughs> maybe not. Something. But anyway, anyway. But um, point is, between that, I had these great records on in the house, and then, and then I discovered underground music. And when that happened, I completely rejected the mainstream. I like stopped listening to the radio. And, what, you know, what, that. like punk stuff or? Yeah, yeah. I just when I discovered going to shows and discovered the underground, I was like, "This is amazing!" And yeah. I just, and just and, and just discovering that music wasn't this abstract thing that was only for you know kind of famous people. They're like, well, shit, anyone can do this. And look at all these <laughs> look at all this stuff that all these cool people are doing. And I want to be just like them. You yeah. Know? And just kind of not so much in terms of genre, but just in terms of doing doing it. There's a DIY thing you can do. You don't have to be signed to a major in order to like be a to have a a, a a a fulfilling life in music you know absolutely and and anything any electronic music pique your interest or techno or anything like that yeah so so that was that was um i had discovered uh so my gateway <clears throat> drug was idm was it was oh yeah it was it was it was honestly the 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 big warp records guys uh apex twin square pusher and mm-hmm. plaid and then when i and when i discovered that that was just like that was cracking open just just yeah. uh, you know my world changed you know mm-hmm. that come 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 to daddy kind of changed my life when i look back at that <laughs> you know and you know um now that i think about it it's like that was really kind of one of those moments of like what is this you know do you remember the moment when you first heard it yeah i didn't get it it took a couple <laughs> listens yeah <laughs> yeah i, I didn't i i, I kind of rejected it at first which is which which I which I think is interesting. It then became one of those like you know seminal records. Yeah, that's great. So then, how did you how did you then make your way to UM? All right, so you know the two things I went to in uh, high school. I was a decent student. The two things, uh, but but the two things I really cared about was playing piano. Uh, but but I always knew I wasn't a great pianist because I would be like you know competing with say you know the 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 the, the kids who were just you know eight hours a day in the practice room. It's like man, that's not me. Yeah, like absolutely, you know, yeah, like, like rock modern off etudes and all that. Yeah, kind of, yeah exactly. Yeah, like like you know after after doing after doing you know one or two of those, like Christ, I can't do this stuff. It's just it's I can't I can't compete on that level. Uh, mm-hmm. But I was always very interested <clears throat> in computers, and music. So I looked around for. What what do I want to do with my life? Where do I want to go? Music and computers. That's what I'm, I've just found so interesting. And so that's mm-hmm. how that's why I went to Miami was because they had a good music technology program that was oh, okay. music and computers. And so you I don't remember because University of Miami at least at the time they had like two divisions of the of the major. They had the electronic. The electrical engineering and the computer programming engineering. Yeah, so 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 <clears throat> it's interesting. With the music, sorry, just to clarify. With, between for me. It, it, the music engineering program at UM specifically. So like, it, it, it's 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 further bifurcated than that. So there's there's uh there there is there there they they have the, at least they used to. I don't know what it is now, but um, two really parallel majors. Uh, one from the engineering school and the other one from the music school. 
Okay. So I was very much from the music. I, I did the program that's from the musical that is treated like a conservatory. You have to do like it's you have to audition. It's very much like it is very conservatory style education. Mm. But you <clears throat> then have all this other um, um, uh, engineering courses on top of it. So so and there's you know and then there's kind of details within there. But I went the uh, the uh, computer science route from there. So, so yeah, this isn't tech, technical. This is like programming. And so you had to learn DSP. <sighs> yeah, very. I did. I was. I was not very good at it. Uh, D, DSP is 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 um, uh, like I like programming, but some of that DSP stuff is just like it's hardcore math. You have to be like a fucking math lead. You know? Yeah, it's like it is. It's yeah. It's really serious stuff. You know the low level DSP. DSP. So so I do a little bit of of just. I like messing around in like in like Max and and Python and things and mm-hmm. just these kind of like 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 scripting languages. Higher level Honestly, stuff. Yeah, I like the <clears throat> higher level stuff to just kind of solve a couple problems, but I, I enjoy it. But it's but I find it very separate from the music. I have a very hard time getting into. Um, I'm not one of these guys who's gonna like uh, sit sit and down and like <laughs> like program this like thick PD patch to go compose. It's just not what I want to do, you know, well, with, I mean, with my music time. Right. Yes, I can, I can relate to that. Yeah. So, um, did you, you know, that was your path before you went to the school or did you choose it as you? That was, yeah, that was, that was what brought me to Miami was, was the, because the, at least at the time there were very few programs that were, that were the, 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 um, the intersection of music and computers. Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. Now, now there's a, now there's a dime dozen. Now there's yeah. a lot. Yeah. yeah. And were you recording like right off the bat, or did you have to get kind of your your feet wet a little bit with that? I guess I guess I could, honestly I didn't really care about record. I mean, uh, what do you mean recording? I mean um, creating music, composing, getting excited about an idea and wanting to document it, however yeah. you could. Yeah. You know, and I'm sure that you have the technology around you at the school but and i'm just wondering at what point you started in your in your uh, time there at the program started recording yeah uh you know it's interesting that's uh so i mean i mean i I don't know i don't know how just to clarify are you also including within that maybe like sequencing of making beats or something like this no i i meant documenting but that's a good question okay too i mean i mean uh yeah because if you're working with sequencers or that's that i feel like that's more experimenting with hardware and seeing how things work right or well, software just, in some yeah. cases but well uh, okay okay so so <laughs> so so i'll answer i have a way of, of answering a question which okay. is which is which is um without getting too into the weeds here um uh the program that i was in at miami was very industry driven at the time mm. at the tail end of a dying studio um, <laughs> industry. So it was very much professionally based. What was more interesting to me outside of that stuff was really just doing stuff with my friends and messing about. Mm-hmm. And that's like, that's where I met Bob, for instance, is what, what, what I found so, so, so fascinating about just the situation there. It was not necessarily the stuff in the classroom, but just there were a lot of really interesting people who were super energetic and just wanted to do stuff all the time. Mm-hmm. So that's how that I found that the most inspiring part was just being around a bunch of people who wanted to make things and like do this totally DIY thing. And it was really I think just the DIY aspect is just so it's just so fun, and that that that's that's really what it is. You know, being from Colorado and mostly and spending a lot of time in California, but having a ton of influx of friends from Miami via mostly Andrew McGuire. Like, okay, I feel that spirit still to this day, and I have a yeah. lot of questions about what the hell was going on over there because, like, <laughs> it just seems like that nothing. Nothing was impossible. You know what? And though? everyone went nuts. I, I think know? I actually have an answer to that. Please tell. We had an outlet. We had places that we could go to perform. No, or, we made them. We well, made them. Well, we we well we sought, sought them out or made them. Or yeah. Like, there was having a party or like, I mean, the, like the like I remember like some of like the older like the more successful groups they'd get to play at like the rat or play at frat right. parties. This and it's like there were a lot of opportunities. 
to do to play things like in Miami. Also, like we were playing. I remember. I mean, that Hooker's Ridge Club. Right. And Naked Face. How many gigs did we play together around yeah. in Miami at random places? It, and also, also <sighs> jump jumping on that. I think I think what 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 was really important to me. There was a lot of competition. I felt a lot of competition, mm. but really friendly competition. Yeah. It was just like, man, you got to get better. You got to like, you got to get real good in order to kind of, when you show up to the gig and you're playing for all these people who you are peers with, who I was, I was, all, I, I always thought I'm the worst guy in the room. <laughs> I'm the worst player in the room. And so it was just always that like, you know, oh, I got to, I got to get better. I got to do more things. Just being around so many prolific people, yeah, that was just oh, it was it was awesome. There was it was always we would do these bands that would play. We'd write an entire show of material, like an do entire an entire half an hour or or, or an hour. <laughs> do it one time. Yep. And that was it. Yeah, and it was just like, how the hell did we do that? I feel that spirit so much. It's incredible to to hear a little bit about this, and it's what I wanted to ask, and I you know maybe. We can talk about this more after we hear this first track that we're going to play, but how much cross-pollination was there between your department and the instrumental music? But it sounds to me like what you're saying is that there was a lot. Like, everyone was hanging out together, and, and yeah. like whoever had an idea for a project, y'all would see it through, right? Yeah. Is that kind of the, the vibe? Or uh, School aside, there was a lot of the community of the music student, the people that were the music students were all like, we were all doing things outside of the school a lot a lot yeah so i think like mm. the actual school wasn't that integrated like yeah exactly like, exactly like there was there was a real division between say jazz and classical you got to keep them the separated the muies you know? the music yeah. engineers the muies were were like their own yeah. group of people and like we were, like i was a percussion major i basically didn't interact with you guys in class like ever. we never had a class together yeah I, like yeah so it was it was strictly outside of school where we were. You were classical percussion. Yeah. Okay. But with Nay, so that's a whole other story. I understand. Yeah. Right. So, and I was I was a classical piano, but I you know I, I I'm not a good classical pianist, so I had a like grad student teaching me you know one of those things. Wait, you were accepted as a classical pianist as your major? Yeah. And then well, no, no. As as my, okay, okay, yeah. That's one of the so accepted as. Major was music engineering, okay. but I had to choose an instrument. So my but my my instrument, the only way I, I could play to any degree of um, you know competency is classical piano. Um, uh, but you know, but but like I said, not interested. In, I was never interested in competing on that level of. Um, oh hell no! Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean that's that's yeah that's a rough path, man. Yeah, totally. I hear you. I'm glad I realized that early. <laughs> I know. You know what's cool now? Just as a quick aside, it's fun now to like read through things like the rock modern stuff. Like, oh yeah, you know, slowly, totally. Or like the the, the Brahms rap cities. Just kind of read through. Oh, it's it. amazing. And like, because I've I've learned enough over the years where I can like enjoy it and slowly play it. Yeah, that's cool. Performing that for anyone, never. Oh, forget you know what it. I mean? Yeah, forget but, it. But anyway, I, I no, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. I just, I love the music, but I would never want to do that at a professional level, man. That, that'd be rugged. What I, I would want to get my 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 chops back up enough is just to be able to shred an airport fucking bar. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know? I mean, that was I, that'd be a small flex. Yeah. Um, yeah. So okay. So how did we get to Panic Bomber then? When was, right. the, when was right. like the yeah. moment that you knew? All right, yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. This is, this, is, this is actually a funny story. Okay. All right. So, um, so I was playing in a bunch of bands, right? I mean, I was I was always super interested. It, uh, I got really interested in electronic music early on, and I was I was always kind of making stuff on the side, mm -hmm. uh, but just kind of it was it was a little bit private. It was a little bit just kind of solo kind of. Kind of, kind of things. I didn't, I didn't really like do it out too much. I was just kind of tinkering, right? Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, you know, playing, playing keyboards and doing kind of like, uh, you know, backup vocals and. Bands. I have a vague memory of like stuff you had on MySpace. Yeah. So we're <laughs> we're getting there. Okay. We're getting there. So 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 I was I was like I was like playing in bands, singing in bands, playing uh, you know I was playing a uh, 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 guitar, keyboards, and bands, right? Um, but I was also doing this like electronic music on the side and I can't remember, I can't remember how it all, 
it all came about. But, you know, as my punk band was called the Dead Hookers Bridge Club. I was definitely like a little bit kind of, you know, fucking rough and tumble in yeah. some ways. You did know? you, just, by the way, did you write a lot for that band? I know Devin wrote a lot for that De- band. Yeah, it was basically, it, it was, the three of us really wrote. It was, it, it, I really do think it was a, a uh, it, it was, it was a village. It was a village. <laughs> like we all, right on. we all wrote, but Devin's an amazing lyricist. Oh yeah. Uh, the, yeah. The guy, the guy can write an incredible song. So, yeah, I think I did a lot of the music, but it was honestly, it felt it felt very, um, very uh, equal t- to me looking back at it. Um, right on. Um, but anyway, uh, so playing <laughs> playing in these bands, making electronic music on the side, and I don't know where the whole thing started from, but uh, I made this one track uh, called "Smooth Sailor" that. Um, has lyrics that that man these days I'm just I am I'm not proud of. Um, <laughs> I like that song though. The track <laughs> kind of bangs. Yeah. The track kind of bangs. Yeah. But uh, the lyrics were written from a place that was like kind of I was like singing about a character yeah. that I made. Anyway, so it's just uh, just this just just this track I made. Literally put it on MySpace. It got picked up by. France's biggest electronic music magazine, which is called Tracks. Mm. Remember when magazines had CDs? Yes. This yeah. is one of those magazines that had a CD. They put it on. They put a track on a goddamn <laughs> CD, well, just and like from something you made on the side. So then I just put on MySpace. It's, it's like it's like how weird is that? Did they contact you? Or yeah. Just okay. That was it. <laughs> yeah, and and then I was like, oh well, I guess this has legs, and so I just started doing it a lot more. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I got a little bit of attention from it. And so I was like, all right, fuck it. I actually really enjoy this. Um, yeah. so I just spent, I started spending more and more time on it. Uh, and the funny thing about that one was that it was, uh, very much, I was not going to clubs. I was very much an outsider as far as the electronic music scene right. goes. And it was just this kind of thing. Like it wasn't based on, DJing or like clubs or anything. It was just, I was, it's kind of was making songs. Yeah. We're just, uh, but it, it's very club, uh, club banger type. It's club track. friendly, sir. It's very, it's very club, yeah, club friendly. So, but you weren't going for that specifically though, even at the beginning? I was just mucking around. I was honestly just mucking around, just trying to write fun stuff. Uh, just, out of my my own curious, do you remember what you were using to make that? That was logic. It was logic, and just oh mm. god, I can't. Jeez, uh, I do not remember if I know I had some sense. It was probably all in a box, and I think, mm-hmm. uh, and I was just really into format shifting of my vocals. Everything was just shifted down, just so I just sounded a little. Oh, like, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Here, I might as well put the fucking track on. Just. Um, Uh, all right, so the lyrics on this. Uh, um, like I said, there's, there, it's, like, it's, it's like a character. Yeah, sure. I'm yeah. a genie from outside of your house. At six, you changed, you altered the blouse. The pain I'm gonna do to you are aroused. I'll wait for a good time until I pound you See me around town and you know my name You say hi and smile but he's in such a shame You should have known to fall in love with me and feel the same You've ruined it and got yourself to blame Smooth sailor got my back to the wind Guess I'm a smooth sailor All my wings have been pinned Guess I'm a smooth sailor What I want I will win Guess I'm a smooth sailor I'm a smooth sailor I'm a smooth sailor Got my back to the wind Guess I'm a smooth sailor All my wings have been pinned Guess I'm a smooth sailor What I want I will win Guess I'm a so point point is But that was that was me figuring out how to make club music. Yeah, but you clearly have a you're attuned to some of the idiosyncrasies of this very particular subgenre. Yeah. So 
But you weren't going to clubs. Was not going to clubs. <laughs> it was not a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but That's did you? were you listening to stuff like this? Or? I, I must have been. I mean, I, 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 okay, here's the thing is, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I really was. I mean, I was listening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of the kind of, of the music I was listening to back then. I mean, I didn't study for the exam, first of all. Uh, I should have studied harder if I'd known this is going to be on the exam. Uh, right. Well, I'm, oh, Okay, well, I thought you were talking about, like, this getting picked up, you were just like, no, I just fucking made this. It's yeah. Like, cool. that like, was... like, thousands of cats have heard it, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, 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 like, I don't know, like, I never, like, I've, I've never, like, like hit it, hit it big, you know, but I was just like, it's like, oh, I'm gonna get, I'm just gonna keep kind of doing my thing, Yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and that, 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 that kind of grew into this whole thing, right? I turned Panic Bomber into a band where I had like a five piece horn section and all that. Uh, yeah, that was cue so the next yeah, cue, sample. Cue. Play, play, the, play the Can't Sleep. Oh, can't. Yeah. On can't. the side up there. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Excerpt. Okay. Uh, oh, wait. Alt, what's Altered State? That's oh, your man. new one, you fool. <laughs> <laughs> So many particles moved. Oh yeah, how they're concerned is nothing new. Mm-hmm. The cats are scratching at my sleeves. Ooh ooh, insist on trying blood to leave. Oh oh, but I can't get it anymore. My burn is spilled. I'm gonna roast them to a crisp. Three, four, and six bits. Four years after the first Panic Bomber stuff. Yeah. And you had graduated yet? I had I, I, I had graduated. But you know what's, what's funny? So uh, I specifically remember rehearsing that song uh, and songs of that same of that same era in the University of Miami practice room still mm-hmm. because I was working with you know students who were yeah. still there. Yeah. And so we would rehearse. <laughs> at, at the at uh, the fo- what was the what the yeah, practice? Foster, Foster, yeah, the yeah. Foster, Foster practice. Room. So was this this um, <clears throat> you know, this this type of club dance music crossover with the live horns was that precedented? Was there other cats doing the same thing out there, or was Honestly, this like a no. like a your experience in Miami? Because that really struck me when I listened to that. I was like, "What the hell?" I, yeah, I have not heard anything quite like that. Yet. Honestly, it was very unique. Uh, so, so the way it got started is, is uh, you know, this this all comes from the kind of the the or, or kind of social Miami ethos of musicians, yeah. where it was just like, "Oh, hey, we're gonna do this gig. We got this one thing here. Here's some charts. Let's just put it together for this for this one thing." So I had this at this gig. I was I was doing solo stuff where it was you know vocals and kind of backing tracks and. Mm-hmm. Um, um, Ableton Live, and then I remember I was just like, "Hey, you know what? I've got this kind of backyard gig at um, God, what was the gig? What was the the, uh, the venue? PS14, and it was um, oh, and yeah. I was like, I was like, oh yeah, um, hey Andy, do you want to come play with this? Uh, play with me on this? Let me just uh, arrange a bunch of trumpet parts <laughs> to come to come play with me, and it went well. 
it was just like Andy just playing his fucking trumpet as I was singing, and I was like, you know what? Why don't I do this? Yeah. Um, so so basically, I just started writing charts for um, trumpet, trombone, and sax, and that and the only reason it was those instruments is because that was who I knew. Yeah. Um, and it's also the perfect horn section. It's also not bad. Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. So that kind of that became a thing, and so I was. I was on, I was playing pretty uh, quite a lot and pretty aggressively um, with this band. Um, I think there was four. It, it turned into five of us. Uh, really? Yeah, and and it was because um, I'm I'm an okay singer, but I brought on another singer. I brought on Oscar. Oscar. Yeah, yeah, she she took on the kind of diva house role, um, mm. and. Uh, yeah, that was that. W- it was, but it was it was always incongruous because I never. Okay, here's the problem. Let me let me just, let me just kind of lay it out for you. Stuff like that, you need a venue to do it. But the music I was playing is club music, so with the stuff, it it became very very difficult actually to kind of keep growing with it and keep going with it. To finding club crossover with live music yeah. is it's actually a challenge. Um, uh, because there's that kind of uncanny valley of like, oh, are you more DJ? Oh, are you more are you more live, live live venue? Um, you know. Can so. Can you differentiate for me between what you're thinking about when you say club versus live venue? Because I I see a club as being a live venue in a lot of cases. But what are you specifically talking about? Sure, 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 sure. I am talking about DJ music. <clears throat> DJ okay. music is not. Um, it's 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 not songwriting. It's its own thing. Right. You're not writing songs. You're writing pieces. This is this, this is the analogy that I always think of. It's sort of like all right, a songwriter, a traditional band. Um, they write each piece. It's a you know each each piece of the statement. It's meant to be listened to from beginning to end. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you could say that um, I, I think this is where the kind of the kind of uh, um, IDM scene in electronic music it's very much still songwriting. It's very much like each each piece of the standalone unit. Right. It's not the same with DJ sets. DJ sets. There's now this entire. Okay, yes, if you're a DJ and you can play up whatever music you want. However, enough time has passed. There's now this whole pedigree. Or there's now now this entire world of of. Um, the tracks you are writing for DJs are designed for DJs. They are designed to not be heard standalone. They're designed to be played as part of a DJ yeah, set. Yeah, actually, ah. I was going to ask you specifically. So you're mixing on domestic, or your your arrangements on domestic violence, the album. Yeah, you have a lot of tracks that end with like it. The, it gets stripped away. Yeah, and it's just the bass line or something, and then just the drums, and then it stops or fades out. Yeah. So it's like, okay, this is. It sounds to me like okay, this is good for DJ. Stuff. That's the transition point. Yeah. yeah. Now that you say it, now that now that now that now that you're saying it, I get <laughs> that. Yeah, that was that's a good retrospective actually. And so this music, it's interesting to me that like this this example in particular, it's like it's like super packed with a lot of sonic information happening. Like e- like even just your voice, you have like a lot of vocal parts and you have a different effect that's happening after like the main when you go ooh yeah or yeah. ooh yeah or whatever yeah. and then like you the horn arrangement I like because it's like it starts out funky which is and then it like goes into these like smooth horns and then it like yeah. every as it builds up they fade away into the synthesizers like you lose yeah. track of them yeah and then it's like the synths and then um yeah it's like it's and it's a lot of information even the drums like there's is that a breakbeat in there or is it? Oh, God, it pro- uh, uh, no, actually, it's it's mostly all. The, I've actually used very little samples over the years. Yeah. Almost almost mm. everything is programmed drums. But yeah. it's it's like uh, it's like definitely like a lot of information yeah. and it and very it, too baseline's way too busy in that tune. For instance, <laughs> you know, like it's just it's just ridiculous. Well, I mean, I I like this quite a lot. Yeah, I, like, I love it. And if if you think it's too busy, I think to me it adds to like just the environment of like the, like the horns cross over like almost like the the party dance vocals and everything yeah. there's like a almost a manic aspect to it that i think works really well very much well you know? well thank you very much and also uh, i'm going to point out one one detail that uh that that i just noticed listening back to that so around this time the way i would write is uh i would i would write a track right and then i would just take the tempo 
and nudge it up as high as I could get it before it would break. Before like the song uh, would fall that, apart. That's really interesting. <laughs> so, like, I mean, that's a bad technique. That's, <laughs> this is why we have these talks, man. That's amazing. You know that, I was, mean? Like, that, was, that was how I used to do things. It was like, okay, what point does this fall apart? Yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to that point where it falls apart, and then I'm gonna take it one step back, and that's it. <laughs> that's awesome. Now you can log that in your toolbox. You yeah. Know, you're like, totally. <laughs> good. Yeah. Good. 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 <laughs> Just write slow and boom, yeah, ramp it. Yeah. Um, so that was two. That was 2010. Domestic violence is 2011. Yeah. And then that's your last album. That was the last for one for like 10 years. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> so let me tell you. Let me tell you what happened with that. Mm. It was just sort of like. All right. So, so, so in the Miami scene, I uh, I put out a kind of um, I put out an, a self release album that was totally just kind of ridiculous and and just kind of in. in intense and kind of it, it took a lot of effort mm-hmm. and uh and i got a little bit of attention for it you know and it was kind of th- things were going well and then just at each kind of ep i did after that kind of got less and less attention and i gotta be honest i just i kind of lost confidence for a lot of for a long time yeah. meanwhile this coincided with me getting more into djing um and so i was gigging <clears throat> i had a weekly where i was i was I was playing every week as a DJ, learning learning how to DJ, and that's this whole other thing. Right. When I started doing it, I was a terrible DJ because <laughs> I was very selfish as a DJ. I was just like, "Oh, here's all the tracks that I want to hear. Here's everything that I like," and I'd be playing a bunch of like kind of crazy music that you know, as you said, that track is very thick. I was playing all this really thick music. It's like, yeah. no, 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 no. This is not working. Mm-hmm. This is just like this is not working on a dance floor. When people are coming to the clubs. It's all about kind of finding that sweet spot of, I'm not saying you have to play to the crowd entirely. You have to have a sense of, a, you know, a, a personality. However, you also have to have one foot in in the listener's ear. And so it's just kind of <laughs> finding that, you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Literally. You literally have to have a foot in the listener's ear. Uh, it's, it's, uh, you, you know, it was kind of, I was learning how to, how to kind of do that thing. That's yeah. super interesting. I'm a horrible DJ for exactly what you were just saying. Like I've been fucking yelled at for putting on bar talk and parties exactly, and like yeah. my dad had me DJ an event and I was just, I was like texting my sister asking See? her what I should put on. Yeah. yeah I was yeah. like, what's a, what's a good DJ song? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. This is just me and. It might be a personal quirk, but I would prefer to hear bar talk. Fuck party. yeah, me too. Yeah, <laughs> of course, of course, of course, of course. Of course. But That's every- why you guys don't get invited to parties. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we make our own parties, man. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I, I think we can all relate on that front quite a bit. Like you were saying, like you were selfish at first, but then you got more into the craft of what it means to be a good DJ. And- exactly. And so I went. Th- I, but honestly, I, I feel I've got man. I've got so many loaded feelings about this whole this whole experience and this whole in this whole world. Like I was making really kind of crappy music. I went through this whole period of like just writing these kind of singles that I'm not really stoked on. That were kind of lifeless, mm. and we're just. I was just kind of. I was trying to find my footing. In this world, oh man, I didn't even include this in the in the uh, the uh, pre-read. I did a record that uh, John Digby signed, um, uh, and it Who? was uh, he's a he's a big guy in the dance community. He's 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 like uh, Sa- Sasha and Digby are like kind of trance legends, and so one of oh. them signed signed this 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 uh, this uh, duo record I did, um, where I would I went fully into like the deep house community, mm. where I was like DJing, but also. There was also a bit of personality to it. Man, I should have included that. Um, yeah, I did this record with uh, Troy Kurtz, um, Kurtz and Bomber. Uh, and oh yeah, for, I forgot about that. Man, yeah, yeah. No, we actually, What's our, what are the tracks on that? I don't right, remember. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let me pull it up. Kurtz and Bomber, and that's who's who's your collaborator? Troy Kurtz. Um, he, uh, what am I looking for? Kurtz. So this was. Oh my God, what year was this? This was. 2012? Actually, wow, that was earlier than I thought. Yeah. Um, this was the one... All right, what's... Okay, what's the real good one? They're all not... They're all just okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, the EP was called Work On Me, so... Um, yeah, let's just do... Uh, yeah, work on me. Thank you. 
Obviously a fucking break. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> and it's like, and the vocals are like, I feel so high. And then drop, you know, and then fucking, you know, and then two two minute long outro. Yeah, so, yeah. It's interesting to me about a lot of the things that I hear in this music is sometimes there's like, it, it, a lot of it is cruising and then there's like one moment where there is a decision to make a very slight harmonic deviation and I feel like it's the only time that it happens in the song but it's super interesting like it happened yeah. like at the end of that like first chorus like you just popped up for a second like made, made a flat two or something like that okay interesting yeah you, you know yeah. what I mean it's just like it always like peaks my ear but I think no I'm with you I'm with you you know I have more questions about that down the line with some of these other yeah, the songs um, but yeah, so so that was a collaboration that you are kind of like. All right, let me. That was actually this is my favorite collaboration. The okay. reason is the reason is is um, oh man, this is gonna go public. All right, um, <laughs> I don't know. All right, all right, the reason is it's okay to have a favorite collaboration. No, but the, my my reasons for it are kind of fucked up. <laughs> um, uh, this is my my favorite collaboration because all right, I. I'm a natural writer. I just, I'm just always writing stuff, right? Troy is a DJ. It's very much, we had a kind of 80-20 um, working relationship mm -hmm. where I would just kind of throw stuff at the wall because I just, you know, I've got, you know, those of us who are, who, are, who are writers, we just write. But we need an editor to kind of tell us whether it's cool or not. Yeah. <laughs> so that was basically that was basically it. Uh, I kind of so so that but I found it extremely satisfying. Okay. That's, um, I that's really enjoyed not a it. fucked up reason. Well, I'm just saying I did a lot of the work. <laughs> but, but you're not but no, not really. Like if because if you you're just because you're producing the bulk of the of the creative ideas. No, that's fair, that's fair. Yeah. I was talking to to uh my Sarah, my wife, about this. Um 
recently. I was like, I forget how this came up, but I, I was saying like how creative, creative like work. It might be the most fun, but it's like the least. It's like the least. Like creative work is not what gets something accomplished. It's yeah. the hard, focused, attentive work that gets something finished and yeah. out the door. It's like, yeah, and that's the hard stuff, and that's the stuff that you should really like. Well, I that's doing your homework, and I have a massive issue with doing your homework. I can all day sit at a piano and create thousands of things, you know, rad shit that I'll take voice memos of. Yeah, but they'll never yeah. become no, a notated yeah. or recorded song unless I'm like, because man, notating is boring. Oh, it's the worst, <laughs> you know. And I'm just Dude. like, like, okay, okay, I gotta like, I gotta do Sibelius. I can't be listening to any tunes or any podcasts. Maybe I can put on like an X Files or something in the background. But for the most part, you can't do anything else. Yeah, that's you funny. know what I mean, Dude, like, Casey. You know, uh, uh, my my uh, partner, graphic yeah. designer. She's in there watching TV and listening to podcasts all day. I'm like, I can't. You can't do it. <laughs> How do you do that? I know. Yeah. I, I know. It's 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 a huge. Um, what you brought up, Bob, just now is a huge hurdle for me personally. It's something I have to. Well, get. it's a hurdle for everybody. Yes. Yeah. That's the point. Is that the creative part is the easy, fun part. Yeah. yeah. And it's but it's not. You need you need both of those things to yeah. get something done. Yeah, definitely. So so anyway yeah so that one went well. Tell me about your hiatus or like or like and then how you eventually made your way to San Francisco I guess. Honestly, all right, dude, straight up, I lost my confidence. Mm. I just straight up lost my confidence, and that was that was it. But but here's the thing: is I never stopped writing. I just stopped releasing. Oh, like, interesting. Uh, so there's like there's a whole bunch of stuff. Oh really? really? I, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot Dang. of stuff. I wasn't I wasn't necessarily prolific. But I had, I mean, look, I had a lot of really good moments in there. Mm -hmm. I went and played, um, I did a symphony gig. God, I didn't send you guys anything. Fuck, I fucked up. I was going to ask you about New that. New World, though, right? Yeah, I yeah. saw that. That was that that, really interesting. Hella fun. And, I, and it just sucks. I have, like, no good footage of it. I have no good ah. record of that it. That was in Miami. Yeah, yeah. So basically, they so, so the New World <clears throat> Symphony has this program called Pulse. And what it is, is, uh, I, I don't know if they're still doing it, because they're, uh, Pre their old uh, director left. Um, so it was, they're an interesting symphony in that they would like, every year they would have this one gala show where they would bring in a, a, a DJ to come, you know, play with the symphony. But it was mostly, they would get like a local DJ to kind of come like, select a couple tracks that some, some like arranger would then like arrange for the symphony. Yeah. Oh. So they contacted me. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm just going to write for your symphony. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. I was Hell like, what yes, else am I going to get this opportunity? Never. I'm just going to write. And they're new, badass. New, piece. new world yeah. was amazing. It was, yeah. pretty, it was pretty tight. So yeah. um, so uh, I basically, I had, um, so so uh, they they took me down. I was, I, was, I, was, I was either living in New York or I was just about to live in New York. No, I was still living in Miami when I first did it, I think. Um, and, uh, um, basically, and it was like, man, how did I do it? It was, it was all, uh, it was all hardware. At this point I was like, oh, okay. Just a little bit of my philosophy. I, when I was doing kind of the, uh, the, uh, panic bomber gigs with the band on stage, I yes. used to use a laptop. I got so frustrated with just laptops crashing or like things not working or having just a screen separating me from the audience that I was yeah. like, never again. And I'm going to put in a ton of effort to use hardware instead, which had this own ent entirely separate set of problems. Yeah, definitely. But at least it's more reliable in terms of it turns on and it turns on and I don't have a giant screen separating me. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah, yeah. So I played with the symphony with uh, Octatrack and I think uh, DSi MoFo and... I, I can't remember what else I used, but um, uh, yeah, it was it was tight. It was uh, it was uh, vocals, poorly sung vocals, and um, <laughs> uh, yeah, a symphony. And it was what songs did you do? Do you remember? Or I'd have to bring up. The, I have I have the chart framed. Oh, one of them. Oh, yeah. safe. You don't. Um, all right, this is one from the second one. I can't remember. They 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 fucked up the name on the on. They didn't print it right. Um, this is not the name. It was Iftar Bass King, I think. They didn't even get the thing right. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's, that's not released. 
This is, is not. This is this is this is this is not released. Um, because I real it, it, it was one of those things. Um, I don't know. I can. Uh, I wasn't happy with the recording. I wasn't. Um, um, things like that. But but basically, um, yeah. I was. I just, just took the opportunity, and then uh, apparently I smashed it. So they brought me down again. Um, uh, nice. So the first time Voss did all the arrangements. Our our our, our uh, buddy Vasily Shalashov. Um, Shout but, out to Voss. But it then, and then they gave me a, a proper orchestrator the second time. Um, um, and but you wrote the parts. I wrote the parts. So basically, I I was like, man, I, I don't have time to like actually arrange for a symphony. No, dude, that's the biggest score. Like that's the dream job, dude. Like being able to compose for an orchestra and not have to arrange. Oh man, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dude. Oh man, that's I did not even. Think about that, because I, I, I'm just thinking about what like what the screen looks like. Even yeah. the logistics of organizing, yeah. just the screen in Sibelius or something. Having like. exactly. having written for orchestra myself, it's like you you got you lucked out, dude. Buddy. Exactly. <laughs> and, and like I did I did the whole thing in in like contact, you know, just with with, for, with like like contact? whatever. Uh, just um, oh, okay. Native, with, I was native instruments like, contact, just like just not whatever, like, not like Apple contact. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever horn, whatever or orchestral libraries are just built in to like okay. you know, yeah. you know, um, native instrument stuff. But uh, and, and 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 Apple stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's and so I just gave him a bunch of like um, MIDI files, you know, or I, I can't remember if I gave him sheet music or MIDI files. But anyway, point is, is um, yeah, they did all the arrangement. Uh, it was great, and then did, and I did this other super cool piece actually with them. Where that uh, sounds like a dream, dude. That sounds amazing. Even even cooler. I man, I'm such a dick for not including any of this stuff. Um, you're, you're fine. Uh, so I worked with this composer the second time I came back. His name was uh, Ian Dickey, um, and so so they also brought this this uh, this uh, composer in who like he and I we kind of like we like, kind of hit it off, um, and so we were, so we wrote this piece together. It was based on sampling the orchestra in real time on the octa track, ah, manipulating whoa. it, and replaying that through the hall. I've had like, <laughs> oh, it was incredible. I've had dreams about doing the same thing. Like, I didn't know that the octa track could even do that. Like, I've been trying to figure out how to do this with an NPC. Yeah, like, forever, yeah, that's totally incredible. Yeah, was, you did that with a full orchestra. Yeah. So they were able to give me, I, like, so they have the whole hall there wired up. So I was able to be like, all right, I need stems of this and this and this. And that, like, it's, yeah, it was, it was <laughs> wow. really tight. So there's an entire, there's an entire score, God, somewhere around here, of, um, uh, uh, like, at this point, I will sample the orchestra and then reverse it and then transpose them up um, a semitone, then 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 an octave, then resample that and put that up another octave. Oh wow, know? that's yeah, incredible! Yeah, and so it was like I was I was actually playing the octave track as an instrument. But yeah, very is is actually very intense. Wow. Yeah, it was super super sick. It yeah. sounds really intense, and also it sounds. When were you doing this? Because I know that right now, like in places like like in, in San Diego, the school down there, this is a big thing that's going on, like electronic music and orchestral music okay. as as like a compositional discipline. Damn, but that's it sounds like you were it had to be t 2013 at the latest. Uh, it right? must it must have been around 2013, 2014. I think I think those are the years I did it. Yeah, it was 20. That's yeah, super 20, interesting. 2014. Yeah, I've, I've, <laughs> I mean, it sounds like you got on to something. But I've been like, really bad at executing, fi like, like uh, um, commercially on any of this shit. You know, yeah. Yeah. whatever, man. That's, yeah. I mean, that's you know, all. you know, you do the that's gig. That's another and you're discussion. Like next to the next thing. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah. So, but what? Okay. You did all that. That that's super cool. And then in New York, you were doing a lot of DJing. I was doing a lot of DJing, um, and just but I wasn't really. Nothing was really kind of clicking. It just it just wasn't a very productive time in my life. Um, mm -hmm. I was I was DJing, but it wasn't really <clears throat> like I had a really hard time in New York making the connections that um, felt meaningful to me mm -hmm. and finding a community. I found it really hard to find a good community in New well, York. Especially coming out, out of something like what you experienced in Miami, I imagine exactly. that you could feel down. Like after, It just seems like you you all were there at a very almost blissful time where you could just be push as hard as you could and it would happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was a, it, was, it was a special, it was a really special time, a really special moment for sure. Yeah, yeah, so it's like New York, I, just, I honestly feel like I was kind of spinning my wheels for a bit. 
mm-hmm. to to a, to a certain degree. Mm-hmm. Did you go mm-hmm. there to go there, like to do the thing? Yeah, <laughs> to do the thing. Yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> I kinda... like how I kn- like. I like and hate how I know what you're talking. Oh about. yeah, I mean. Yeah, it just, it just gotta do it. You gotta needed, go do the thing. You know, I was turning thirty in Miami, and I was like, I can't turn thirty in Miami. I need a break. I need to do something different. It's like I if I if I stay here, I'm just gonna be the Miami guy. And it's like it's like all right, I need to I need to do something different. Like I still love Miami, but I was like, all right, it's I just need a change. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, um, I didn't know what that change was, so I I tried New York. It wasn't the right place for me. You were there for how long? Three years, something okay. like that. Um, so yeah, I gave it a try, uh, but then just I had I had friends out out here out in the bay, who were like, man, you just got to move out here. And as I've, I've always loved it here, my parents are nearby. Yeah, and so I was like, you know what? And I had and I had work here, so so I got work to pay for me to move here, which is awesome. And that yeah. was and that was like it was like all right, let me just take this opportunity while I can. Yeah. Um, and so, dude, honestly, you know, just kind of. Things I'm I'm feeling really good about about <clears throat> making music here in the Bay actually. Feeling yeah, really good. That's fantastic. I'm yeah. I I feel the same way. I mean, a lot of there's a lot of people scattering here and there, but that's okay. Yeah, I mean, it, I think it's, <laughs> I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's easy, yeah. but it's, yeah. but you know, there's really good creative community. I feel like. Oh uh, yeah, that's why I initially moved here when I did. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, and what year did you move here? Um, only like four years ago. Oh, dang. Yeah, yeah, so I've, I've been All here right. long. Yeah, so when you... Wait, when really? You, yeah. When you first moved out, there was like large contingent of Miami cats. Actually, what's interesting is that I... Man, it's kind of... It's, it's kind of... Yeah, it, it was... There was a bunch of the Miami UM people here, but what was interesting is that, you know, I, I, by this point... In my life, I, I'm like, all right, I'm an electronic musician. Fuck it, I don't care. I'm not trying to like. I'm just like, I'm just like, I'm like, I'm like, cool. This is what I do. This is kind of where I feel comfortable, right? Uh, so, I moved here right after Ghost Ship, and that Oof. had had really, Oof. really messed up the the uh, the electronic music community. I mean, it, it messed up the the community at large. You know, yeah, that was, that was yeah. A, the day that that happened. I didn't know about it yet, and I was about to fly to New York with my wife and I was texting Matt some random shit Matt had it's just yeah. like just like texting him like some jokes or something and mm-hmm. he was just like yo dude <laughs> not, <a different> guy. <laughs> not now yeah. man like you don't know what's going on and then I read about it and I was like oh my god you know what's funny is that is that you know because I've gotten pretty involved in the underground here is is uh I have a number of friends who was like oh yeah man I was there you know it's just like it's like that yeah. it's crazy yeah well I mean yeah I'm I lost lost some friends there. Really? For sure. Yeah. Oh damn. Yeah, yeah I, know, but, I know at least one person that died. But. Yeah. Damn. It was rugged. It was horrible. But but okay. So you've only you've only been here. Yeah, I'm a newcomer. I'm a I'm 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 here to you know mess up your neighborhoods. <laughs> yeah. So you were here like two years and then we we done some onkos. Yeah, onkos. Yeah, dude. Interesting. Yeah. Totally. Well, that's just because you know Bob Bob knows I'm always looking for trouble. Yeah. But okay, it's true, and <laughs> I, um, that kind of raises the question a little bit. I know that you like a lot of different kinds of music, yeah, but you seem to make pretty much exclusively electronic music at this point. At this, yes, yes, but I mean, I knew you. You're you're like my metal show bud. Like, yeah, yeah. We would go to all the metal shows together. <sighs> you, you know, honestly, it's just it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of like of 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 um. There are only so many hours in the day. And there's only so much attention I have. That's true. And so I've just kind of made peace with like like hey, this is where I am most effective with my time. Mm-hmm. Is is I'm I'm I feel like I'm pretty good at doing uh, at doing the electronic thing. Um, and I can kind of compete on a higher. I'm not saying you, you know. No, what I mean. You are good. You know what I mean. Like, yeah, yeah. like, like I can. I have yeah. something to offer the community, uh, um, as opposed to I have nothing to offer the metal the community. I well. uh, I enjoy going. <laughs> like okay, 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 but you know what I mean. Like, yes, yes, uh, yes. It's it's. Um, uh, I feel quite comfortable in this thing, and I'm not saying. I'm not saying I'm not adventurous these days, but it's just more a matter of time management, really, at the yeah. end of the day. So, when did you start with Art Heist? Oh, yeah. 
That was was that right when you moved? Or so, was it slightly thereafter? Art Heist has this been this thing on the back burner that I've never given it the right attention. Where so so it's been my kind of placeholder label like 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 label. If I were to actually start a label, mm-hmm. Art Heist would be the the label. Here's the funny thing about it is that I had booked the first I was like I was like, you know what? I need to just get this thing off the ground. It gives it a little branding that's just outside of just my name. It mm-hmm. just gives it a, a home to call like other things if I want to bring other people in or if I mm-hmm. want to get other other uh, other other artists involved. I just thought Art Heist just sounded super cool. I've got an aesthetic for it and all this stuff. Yeah. You know. Um the whole concept was um all right, I'm gonna start doing parties. You know when my first party was booked? I had it booked for I wanna say it was like April second something like that 2020 <laughs> i'm not joking yeah and i'm just like you gotta be kidding me man yeah, yeah. so yeah still haven't had art heist zero one yeah you know um yeah <laughs> just like so so because because i mean the whole thing is that I am planning on starting it as like a kind of party series mm-hmm. and also a label eventually. What I do is I when I when I finish music, I shop it out to labels. If no one else wants to sign it. It's like okay, great, it's an art heist record. Cool. Yeah. Boom. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right on. Right on. Right on. So, and um, you have what's the name? Oh, Trepanation. Trepanation. Like, yeah. Like the first like full art heist record that you did. Yeah, in 2020. That's the first. That's that's like me getting my my kind of. I'm back in my groove. How long were you working on that before? Was it like stuff from much older, or is it relatively recent? So the year before, I put out the Lost EP, and that that's was from that's older stuff. That though. was the older stuff that yeah. I kind of wrapped up, and mm-hmm. so Trepanation is mostly pandemic music, uh, or or. Bo- Mostly stuff that had been written going into the pandemic, um, and then during the pandemic, and I just kind of like maybe maybe some of the tracks are from my archive that I pulled up. Mm-hmm. You know, um, there 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 were a couple in there that are, you know, you have those those tunes that you're like, oh man, this is I know there's something there, but I just don't have it yet, and so you have to oh, put yeah. it to the side. I pulled them out. I was like, oh yeah, now I know how to finish this song. You know, um, but but like some of them were written in a week. You know, it's it's those things. You know, you get those ones you've been working on for years, and those ones that you just do in a week. Yeah, you know, just clicks. Oh yeah, I mean, you know. it, they'll just yeah just fall totally. out sometimes. So this stuff, like your newer stuff, I it sounds distinctly different to me than your older stuff. Yeah, and to me, it's like it's much more sparse. Is it perhaps much more sparse? I agree. And like really moody yeah yeah. (laughs) like you've got it's like um and uh, i feel like it's more it's got more techno at least modern techno absolutely it has um and i've heard you speak about this before but you one of the reasons that you were saying that you wanted to start art heist is because your music is too poppy to be techno and too techno to be pop yeah which stands like I mean, that's what it sounds like to me. But is that you still? So that or? I always, I always. Str- so what I've been kind of, you know, you're right. I'm feeling more focused in my work these days. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like uh, because you know, listening to the older stuff, it's like uh, you know, there's just a lot of competing interests, um, and uh, it mm-hmm. just from myself, it just because I'm interested in so many things. Like of I listen course. to so much music, and I'm. You know, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm a terrible genre writer. Like, if I actually try to write techno, oh god, it's awful. It's like I get, I get too <clears> bored. <throat> um, so everything I write is like, yeah, maybe it, maybe it sounds very, um, even if it's club focused. Uh, I feel like it's, it's rarely genre. Um, you know, it's rarely like this is a deep house track. This is a, this is a like an electro banger track. This, you know, this is something. I, I honestly. As, as many friends that I have that play electronic music, I do not understand the maze of the oh, electronic music subgenres. I, yeah. I just cannot wrap my brain around that. Um, like, deep house, d- down tempo, blow, like, I, don't, I, don't. I feel like that's an entire series. Like, you could make, like, a like yeah. three-season series of casts just on 
yeah. on I, that in, entirely. It's, I mean, there's like there's that. I remember that website explainer though. You like click Ishker, and, yeah, yeah. It, 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 Ishker's guide to electronic music is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, but I I still like. I just don't like if I hear a track, I don't know where to put it in that map. You know. Yeah. So okay, okay. What that comes from is DJs listening to music and DJs being like, oh, I want to put this in my record bag. And I want to be able to like, like honestly, I, I think that's it. I think it's that it's like <clears throat> DJs producing music, listening to other people's music, and just it's just it's just DJs all the way down. It's <laughs> it's it's, 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 it's it. DJs that's honestly way. it. Uh, I, I, I but it's also very much like, yeah, you're making you're making stuff that's like you're you're kind of writing for a mood in the club. But I'm once again, I feel like my mood. It's my stuff is pretty. Fucking moody. At least the recent, Dark. the recent yeah. work, yeah. work, work has. Oh, been. definitely. It's not necessarily even for the dance floor. It, it's a little bit more live performance oriented. Yeah. You know, um, uh, it's 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 club context, but was is really more. Um, I think it f- would fit better being performed rather than DJed. Uh, and it's once again, I'm always mm. writing that that kind of that kind of line. Uh, between the performance and between the DJ. I love DJing. It's super fun. However, it's not as satisfying to me as writing and performing. Yeah. You know, that's the part that, like, really tickles my pickle. It really gets me going. It's just <laughs> like, it's like that's that's stuff that, you know, like, don't get me wrong. I've had some great times rocking parties. I've been feeling really confident in my DJing lately, actually. Yeah. I'm, feeling, I'm feeling great about it. I listened to the set that you put up, uh, when was that, in April? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. great. Yeah, thank you. Thank that was you. fantastic. Yeah, really I, I, I hadn't listened to that aspect of your work before, and that was really cool. I'm glad that that link was included. Man. I made sure really to cool. give that to you guys, just because yeah. it, it's, it's important context. Well, as to what's going on. Yeah, if you're cool with it, when we put this out, we'll include of any course, of that please. stuff yeah, as, as well. You know, that's, um, but can we... Were we going to listen to the uh, negative space, or is that already? Are let's, we, no, oh. let's listen to negative space for sure. But okay. I wanted to. I kind of wanted to set that one up because it's such a. It's a three minute long, and I also made a three minute long excerpt because, and here's the. I think. Yeah. Like I couldn't. I couldn't cut this one down. Okay. It's got to be three minutes. Yeah. Oh, there's a whole minute. It's like how long is the song? Eight to eight minutes, probably. Yeah. Knowing so, me. Um, this is the one where I was going to say, like, listening to this, I, I had assumed that you had had some proper compositional training just because of how the bass line was. Oh, actually. okay, cool. Yeah. Just, you know, that was what my ears did. Oh, why, why think? <laughs> <laughs> let's but let's, I'm, let's I'm listen curious. to it. Let's listen to yeah. it. Yeah.
my favorite part. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. So my question for you about this is how do you think about song form when you're writing this kind of music? Mm. That's a good question. Okay, that song in particular is very much a song. That is very much like I'm... Um, uh, however, you're right. There's a long-ass intro, long-ass outro. Um, is it just one stanza of lyrics? Or the- yeah, that, that, that one. Um, man, I spent so much time trying to write more lyrics and just like just wasn't clicking. I was like, all right. Um, yeah, it they, they they Yeah, yeah. It's like nothing, nothing, nothing worked as well as that one. Um, I used to never do that, but then I've just, I've just, I've given up. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, why, why mess with it if it works? You know? Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. I, I just, I just don't think of myself as a great lyricist. That's all. I just, and I'm just like, I like singing. And I like, and I like having vocals in music, mm-hmm. but, but just, um, I'm no, I'm not a Bob Dylan, and I'm fine with that. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, like, because I, when I listen to other people's music, I never hear the words. It's the melody is <laughs> the most important part. Right. Yeah. I mean, some, I definitely can relate to you on that. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. Um, I'm used so, to seeing your words. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't make it easy, huh? Yeah. Um, <laughs> So this, like, you have, it's like an intro, verse, there's some space, verse again, then like a drop out, and then it comes back and it builds, and then... Yeah, I mean, this this piece is very, it's, it's obviously like ABA, where like B is this like, you know, kind of experimental, gnarly terror. Like like while we're working on a music video, like literally the, 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 the markers in Premiere were terror. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. like so that was just kind of the, the kind of the kind of creepy part. Uh, that's um, you know I don't I don't do it. I've I've been getting more into kind of sound design as a kind of compositional technique, and, yeah. and that was kind of one of my forays, really kind of focusing on that because um, uh, I've been very musical uh, for you know my history, and I'm just these days only really getting <laughs> into like sound design as a as a. Um, as a palette and as a compositional technique, which is what I'm kind of focusing on with the new EP, which is the one I'm, I'm now wrapping up. It's very kind of sound design. Um, yeah, I was gonna say that actually about that. Yeah, so that's kind of one of the, just one of the, where I'm where I'm exploring now. You know, I'm sure I'll come, I mean, everything I do is, is inherently musical. I'm, I'm, I'm not very good at, at um, doing just sound design pieces. I get, I get bored. Anyway, that, that's sorry. interesting, I mean, I was, Listening to the the new EP, I was I thinking about notes. I was like, is it, is it appropriate to say sound design? Like, I didn't know if that's like no, how you it, thought yeah. about it, you yeah. know? Because it, it definitely um, that 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 term came to mind. That definitely is strong. Yeah. And, okay. And good. Good. It, which good. Is I'm, I'm glad that that came across. Yeah. Yeah. For me, for me too. Like Excellent. definitely. And and like this is noticeably like this isn't true for every track on this album, but this song in particular it's like the drum beat never really hits like a techno yeah uh like it's always kind of there's a lot of syncopation in the beat itself so it's Mm -hmm. like it never it never gives you that yeah it never it never really gets satisfying it's always dissatisfying Mm. this i mean this this piece is meant to be the kind of like you know it's kind of like it's almost like a radiohead tune you know what i mean Mm -hmm. it's very much in that kind of like um on uneasiness um Uneasy. I mean, there's definitely more satisfying tracks. I mean, there's a couple bangers on it, but you know, there's uh, you know, but um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I like I like this one though because it's so it's it's different from almost a lot of what you've done in the past. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and it's and it's dope. Thank you. That's the other reason. It's dope. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like so, it because yeah, sure. it's dope. Because it's dope. But so, if I can ask you, Mark, it's just just about because uh, because like I said, I never formally studied composition. I just kind of mm-hmm. learned everything just through trial and error. Yeah. Um. So so I'm just I'm just curious. Like so that made you thought think that I might have studied a little bit in mm-hmm. that in that way. That's interesting. Well, yeah, and then taking into account what you had done with the the horn arranging. Yeah. Too, I I was I had. A, and being at U and M, I, I, you and them, yeah, you, yeah. you both, and, of both of them. Um, I, I had assumed that you were like in arranging in, in composition classes, but I didn't know, and I was really interested to hear that. But it was um, 
yeah the the motion of the bass in that track sounds yeah, like that you were very uh conscientiously in inverting chords in a certain way and you wanted that voice there to to bring out a certain tension which is, is something that i love experimenting with like yeah you know, totally. no, nothing's in root position and, and you can get like so much more rich feeling chordal structure I, that way you know <laughs> honestly Dude, half of that shit is just like being insecure and being like, ah, uh, this isn't interesting enough. Let me fuck up with a bass. I mean, I, oh, I feel, well, man. <laughs> I, think, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, I mean, at least that's how I used to do things. Yeah, I'm more confident as a composer now. Like, yeah, when I was, you know, mm -hmm. it's funny just hearing the work. Like, oh yeah, I was in my twenties and I was just doing all these things. You know, uh, singing about how much I want to, you know, be with. Be with girls, and, and, I'm, and I'm and I'm like doing these doing these like 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 funny bass lines just to just to try to like you know get get the music nerds riled up, you yeah. know. And that's it's just kind of funny how that, how that works. <laughs> well, yeah, and I think the other thing too is the way that the the bass lines resolved as well. You okay, know, it, yeah, it seems like uh, um, you know very conscious conscientious voice leading. As okay, well. interesting. But that was you, you know. I was just curious about no, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, good, good. Because, I mean, the other part of that, I think I talked about this a little bit, is, is you know, a lot of the uh, harmony in, in this, like, in this overarching genre is static, in, you mm -hmm. know, and so when you hear something like that, like, I'm personally, because I'm, I'm a harmony nerd, I'm drawn to that immediately. You yeah, know what I mean? Totally. I don't have as much experience in electronic music overall, you know what I mean? So I, I have, totally. I'm obviously looking for ways that I can relate through my musical experience. So that was, that was really interesting to hear. Excellent. For, for Excellent. Me, you know yeah. I mean? yeah. That's I interesting. Have, I have something to ask you about maybe the new, tr the new EP. Mm -hmm. Uh, and like, so I was going to play Altered States, actually, the first track on It's that. funny, because I just give them names, and then I don't, I don't know. Or all, like, yeah, I mean, I don't even know. This could be a working title or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> should, I, should I just play that one? Yeah, let's just, it's right. two minutes, you know. leaning into club here so mm. the thing that i wanted to ask you is like um is the i so like when i think about this music so like um like uh is what is the like prime environment for it is it on the recording or is it in uh, the club that's a really good question um It is, it is done as a recording. It is very much done as a recording. However, I, it is mixed and produced with the club in mind, with the dance floor in mind, with like 
so I can go into a club and I don't have to be playing it. Someone else could be playing it, and it would still slam. Is it written in that with that in mind? Yes, yeah. this 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 EP very much. At least yeah. the first two tracks on it are very much like this is a DJ track. You know, um, yeah. You know, it's uh, it's 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 slamming, it's bumping, it's it's you know, it's it's very uh, actually uh, fun fun fact about it. It's too low for me to sing, so I recorded it half step or no a full step up, and then use melodyne. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah nice, that's just nice. the, the, the really. It's just one. It's one step too uh, too low. But um, so that's another interesting. Like a lot of your, at least your very early stuff, you sang very high. I did. Like in the very early Panic Bomber stuff, you were singing mm-hmm. very light, and like now you're singing like. <laughs> no, you sang low too, but this at least you're singing like more calmly. Yeah. On your newer stuff. Well. You know, it's very much like oh, well, I'm a maturing older adult. Uh, <laughs> it, it, this is this. I mean, as I was saying to you off off mic earlier, it, it was uh, this, this this track. I swear to God, there's at least ten different, totally different vocal stylings on yeah. this, and I just it just never. It was always <clears throat> wrong. It was uh, it just and it just that one. It took me a lot of a lot of um, the, the the track was done. And then just get getting the vocals to tie it together because yeah. um, I like a lot of most people in electronic music just do instrumentals, but for some reason I like singing. It's the bane of my existence. Yeah, I hate it. <laughs> I can't not like it. I can re- I can relate, man. I mean, yeah, I wish I didn't like it. I wanted to. So that kind of like leads me into the other question, which is like, how do you? Because some of your tracks are instrumentals. Yeah. How do you decide when you are gonna have one with vocals or? And and then actually like, I mean it sounds like for this one it came after the track, you did the track first and then put the vocals. Yeah. And then so, uh, what? How do you know? How do you know when a track is in, gonna be like instrumental? I'm really bad at doing that. Um, I, <laughs> I I I I default to putting vocals on everything, but it's the last thing I do, uh, which is kind of I think is kind of interesting. Uh, but while what I'll do, okay, my writing process is almost always groove first. Uh, it's almost it's either a riff or a bass line or chord progression or mm-hmm. just like a melody. There's just, you know, something something comes, I then build a track from from that. Mm-hmm. And usually what I'll end up doing is I end up going, oh shit. And okay, okay, cool. I, I think that's this would sound really good as a lead instrument. So what I do is I go, I sing gibberish literally just, just make up sounds Whoa. yeah and that gives me the shape of words and i'll work with that and i now know okay cool i've got this i've got this melody here this is going to become a thing i eventually write lyrics around the shape of that gibberish so it's a lot of like that's really interesting uh, yeah. yeah it's because it's it's half aesthetic half um half like um um delivery you know it's 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 yeah. less it's less about what the words say but more about the shape of the words mm. having the right fit into the music interesting do you, do you ever start with constraints or you know do you ever start a piece with just like all right i'm only going to use these two pieces again, or something like that or do you just you just let yourself like start with the riff or groove and go for it from there just as a exercise i'm curious i would say my constraints i've i've kind of already set my constraints by saying that i'm mostly doing dance music okay i think that those it's like i'm 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 just spending a lot of time doing club music uh and so that's those are my guidelines interesting you know that i kind of let that make make those decisions for me because there's a certain point and you can't make every goddamn decision you need to, you need it's, it's, something has to yeah. has to give you walls on that same note do you ever feel like you're going insane trying to figure out a specific drum sound or synth sound sure, or do you feel like you have your machine styled or, or I mean yeah yeah to 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 a certain degree it all depends on what I'm trying to do it's like if I'm doing if I'm just trying to do like if I'm doing a fun banger I'll yeah. just you know it's like yeah just honestly uh 
the Beastie Boys said it best. Nothing sounds quite like an 808. Yeah. Right? It's like it's like you just can't beat it. Um, yeah, yeah. It's just you know they made it and it's just perfect. But, but you've changed it to this boy, right? Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the uh, that was on FDR Disco round. Breaking that they said that. Yeah, classic. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I mean, I mean, I don't just do club oriented music, but it's like it's just it's just kind of it's my default now, yeah. where it's just like oh, I'm gonna go spend some time making music. I just it's like. A minute to have fun, a minute to enjoy it, and I can do that without, like, I'm not saying it's not challenging, I'm just saying that, like, I'm just, I'm in it to, to, to enjoy myself, and I want to play it out for people, and, and for <clears throat> me, this is my maximum enjoyment. Beautiful. Yeah. You know? Yeah, man. That's killing. I mean, I mean, but then again, I do also like I've been I've been doing a little more scoring lately. Uh, so I've been doing scoring for like podcast stuff. Um, oh. You know, uh, so that's kind of fun. Uh, oh yeah. You know, it's good. So if you guys, uh, hey, wait, you guys have a podcast? Because <laughs> <laughs> um, do you, you guys, music for our ads? Do, do you guys need to hire any uh, musicians? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we don't know any composers. Yeah, any composers. <laughs> uh, no, but um, I don't know. Uh, what else? Uh, what else I got? I don't, I don't I'm, know what else I'm always fascinated in the type of music that you're making, like the patience that it takes. Yeah. Like, and it's because most because your music has vocals. It's easy to kind of. Think about it from a pop lens. Yeah. And uh, pop would never wait that long. Like, yeah. <laughs> it would like you. You really have to wait and like, because your tracks will be like eight nine minutes long. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. Like, and and when it comes down to it, like, it's like there's not like if you think about it in song sections, there's not that many sections. Mm -hmm. It's like this thing develops. It changes over this amount of time. Mm -hmm. You have to. And it's like, you have to have the, like, there's two ways to experience it. You can just, like, let it wash over you. Yeah. Or you can have a, like, hyper-perceptive ear and, like, remember what it was, like, more than 30 seconds ago. Like, it's probably going to be yeah. the former in most cases, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. You're trying to and, do both. Yeah. I mean, as, as a casual listener, you know, but then take repeated listens to get to the point where you're getting um, detail-oriented, <clears throat> unless you are really pointedly listening from the onset, right? I don't know how many people... I don't know what you expect from listeners taking this on, like if you're... No, if exactly, you're like exactly. Fully no, I, engaged 100% that Here's way, the but. thing, is that that's what is so, is so incredibly insane about why I make this. God, because it doesn't make any sense, because... This music, more than any, I feel like, is is so ephemeral and is transactional. Mm. Mm. It's basically based on like, how well does this do in a club? It's it's um uh you know it, it's very much like um can you get this like moment um uh, you're kind of chasing this moment um rather than just kind of um being being in a place uh yeah. with with other forms of music in fact i find it incredibly frustrating incredibly just demoralizing and in fact the entire electronic music community <laughs> is is yeah yeah no no no, no, no. i mean seriously here's the here's the crazy thing is that is that um i literally can't tell you who wrote my favorite tracks of the last that i've heard in the last month like because mm. it's all based on singles it's all like like how does uh, uh, how who did this this one thing i don't know it's the one with the purple cover that like you know yeah. um you know is it this tempo and it oh man it's a it's a great one it's so based on singles and not based on artistry and yet i will listen carefully for those for those those moments but here's the thing i think that i think that you're kind of downplaying uh, to to a certain extent um I think that I know what you're talking about about like the passive listening. You can still tell from the passive listening whether or not there's the details in there. Mm. I've noticed that more than anything. It's like it just won't fit right. And you're just you you get you will naturally get bored listening to it as as opposed to something that is subtly taking you on a little bit of a journey. It has to be the right length of time, right? It can't yeah. be like the if the bill if you're doing like a build, for example, mm -hmm. goes for too long, you like are really losing track of what's happening. 
it's like and then and then then you're like where in like minimalism bro or like some there's the best example for me personally that i can think of is the first track off of the c and cake um two bedrooms i think and that's closer to pop Mm -hmm. but it's like coming out of like the chicago's 90s c and k yeah the c and cake and they do something where in the very first track it's instrumental ding, 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 like kind of fast like up tempo for a while like for a song like that and then three ish minutes in there's a subtle change then the vocals then, come in yeah and like but things have been changing there's like a synth in the background that's slowly shifting oscillating modulating and then there's like a quick harmonic shift and then the vocals come in but like going back to what bob said i felt similarly when i was listening i was like oh is he gonna do the thing <laughs> when, like the vocals come in late like i was yeah. i was because i had had that experience before yeah. and but i was very much an engaged and active listener i was like i wonder if he's gonna and then you did which oh, i thought was awesome yeah. you know what i mean but i just that's that's my lens in which I'm able to relate to that. And I think it does make a difference because you can be like chill and a groove into something. And then when such an important element as vocals come in later on, you're just like, whoa. Yeah. All right, I'll wake up and. I mean, I agree with you when you said about patience. Because you're yeah. right. You have to be damn patient with this stuff. And it's, it, it, it's funny, though, because it's this kind of. Um, there's almost a. Uh, a uh, what would you say? It's a. Um, uh, it's not an oxymoron. It's it's a it's a paradox of like yeah. you have to be damn patient and like you have to you have you have to really wait to like get to the good stuff. Yet you're listening to the same goddamn thing over and over again in the moment. Yeah. You're you're like you're like in it the whole time, but you're not getting the the, the real root of it you're, until you've spent time in it. Your your music isn't like your music isn't um it's 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 capturing you with the groove. Mm-hmm. Like per- altered states is a great example of this. So it's like you have this like super super funky thing happening. Mm-hmm. So it's like very dancey. You can sit like groove to it. Like you're like oh yeah, and then you're like it's like you're tweaking the sound. Blah 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 blah. Yeah right right. And it's like and then you develop it. But it's but like it each each moment like you still have this like you have this groove happening and it's so like the pocket is deep in your stuff. It's like, yeah that's interesting. Is. You you said funky just now and I was like wait I didn't. Like even just the way when you have the double bass drum kicks, the way they they um, lay, the doom doom. There's yeah, yeah. There's, there's something that's interesting. Funky, yes, it is funky. <laughs> uh, honestly, honestly, you know, it's, just, it's just this old knob right here. It's just you see, yep, 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 you yep, see yep. where that where that shuffle knob is sit right yeah. there. I never touch that. I literally. Don't that's touch all you it. need, dude. I just set it there. R- once. Richard is pointing to no. a shu- uh, There's the uh, shuffle. That's the uh, the uh, the uh, swing. The swing knob on the tr 8 S. I just found the fucking. I found the setting. Yep. Never touching it. That's it. I should actually just tape it down. <laughs> or at least do the little pen. Or, oh, you're right. That's a good. That's thing. a good. That's a good call. Yeah. Uh, wow, this was fun. Uh, yeah, man. Cool. So, wh- like, what's next on the panic? God, I'm just Richard. Uh, panic I'm, bomber's dead. I'm right? still. Yeah, that was a whole thing. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's a whole thing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that was yeah. So Richard Haig now just doing it under my own name, just because uh, you know I own it, I believe in it. I, uh, you own your own name. I own it. I own it. <laughs> yeah, I own all the domains. That's the most important thing. Uh, no, the uh, I don't know. I'm just I'm honestly just kind of keep on going. I, I like you know I'm shopping out the the one that's already written. Meanwhile, I'm obviously you know it's like how we all are. It's like we're 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 already working on the next thing. Uh, yeah. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah I, you know. I have to put out the records as soon as you can, otherwise by the time they come out they're like so far You just don't from, care. Yeah. yeah. You just don't want to put the effort into time to do anything with them. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm looking forward to whatever the next Oncos gig is. Uh, they're singing that as well. Oh. <laughs> yeah, man. I want there to be one, but Lord yeah. help me. Lord help me. That record's done, by the way. I, Sean, actually we should invite Sean over. We should. Let's invite him over. Yeah, Does yeah. he live nearby? Ish, twenty minutes. He's up in Montclair. Um, I mean, if it's not bad. Yeah, for for the Bay, it's not twenty four. Yeah, exactly. Well, but so any any I should we should cl- we should end. I yes. Think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very good. Um, do you have any anything any shout outs or anything you wanna? I did not prepare. Uh, say thank your mom. Or... Y- yeah. Thanks. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I I was. 
it's great. It's great sitting down with you guys. Uh, Thank I've, you so much. I, man. Yeah, this has been this is really fun. It's like yeah. it's always easier to talk about yourself, you know, especially with your friends. You know, it's, um, um, yeah, it's, uh, this this is great. It's fun to do a little retrospective every now and again, and yeah. and just like. It's funny. I I I always forget all the cool things I've done. <laughs> I'm not trying to like brag, but it's just like you know, yeah, yeah. No, it's you know. I didn't, I didn't mean it that way. I just mean like you know, oh, you yeah. do you do things in life, and then you're like, oh wait, I've done all these cool things. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> you know, it's true. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm just I'm just kind of trucking away, working on. I'm trying to stay diverse. Uh, you know, and not uh, like right right now. I'm really kind of going down the kind of dance rabbit hole. I'm gonna pull out of that eventually. You know, mm-hmm. I'll be doing other things. It's like right now I'm doing kind of because um, clubs are, are opening back up. I'm I'm really energized by that. Yeah, I want to be out there DJing. I'm really enjoying DJing these these days, uh, and just kind of so I'm just kind of riding that energy right now. I'm sure I'm gonna get sick of it and go back to just doing kind of you know you know more songwriting. Yeah, um, more kind of playing, and I'm just kind of looking forward to to seeing where it goes. I'm Lord knows I'm not stopping. So awesome. Yeah. Well, where the, where can the people find you? Oh, um, just richardhaig.com, h a i richard h a i g dot com, and then that links to all the things. That's right. the easiest way. Cool. cool. Yeah. All right. Sweet. Thank, it's been Thank pleasure, you. Pleasure, guys. Thank you. All right. Oh, Hold it in. Uh, it's all good. Shake your hand too hard. That's uh, a little sprain. I'll be fine. All right. Beer. <laughs> <laughs>